Bazaar! <laughs> While researching a video I'm making about Berserkers, I keep seeing people reference a Lindy Beige video called Berserkers, The Facts and the Fictions. Unfortunately, this silly video has inspired a horde of halfwits to disseminate pseudo-history on every video related in any way to Berserkers, even music videos. It's one of the top results for the search term Berserker, and it has over a million views, and it makes claims like Berserkers didn't go berserk, and that instead they were champions who fought duels and wore bearskin shirts. He calls the notion that Berserkers went berserk, something that a 13-year-old boy would believe. The problem is that if you read an actual book written by an expert in the field, someone who actually knows Old Norse, now then, uh, I'm not going to be able to do any of the pronunciation, okay? Uh, but uh, this guy... You will read that Berserkers did go berserk. For example, Dan McCoy in The Viking Spirit writes that the Berserker charged and held onto the battlefield with no armor and almost less concern for their own well-being, hacking and pummeling away with utter abandon while lost to themselves in their trance. In The One-Eyed God, Chris Kershaw writes that when warriors felt the berserk fury coming over them, they must get out of their ships and away from their followers. They fight with trees and rocks until the fit is past, and in this way avoid killing their men or each other. Well, maybe it's possible that YouTube history guy is right, and the experts are wrong. Let's look at some of Lindy's claims. For example, according to Lindy Beige, but later on, uh, there are, of course, uh, sagas and uh, historical accounts of uh, Vikings who would suddenly draw a sword and and charge into the enemy and lay all about them and you think aha there you go you see berserkers berserker unfortunately the word berserker is never used to describe them he goes on to use an example from Egil saga in which the Rolf goes berserk in battle Thorolf became so enraged that he slung his shield on his back and took his spear in both hands. Then he ran forward and laid all about him on both sides. Men all around him ran from him, but he killed many. Egil Saga, chapter 53, if you want to look it up. Um, now, you see, there's, now there's another one, which is, which, which is like this, you see. And no, I'm not, I, can't, I can't do the accent. Um, but again, here's the translation. Uh, King Harold Sigurdsson became so enraged that he ran forward all the way out of his battle line and laid about him on both sides. Neither helm nor mail coat could withstand him. And then all those who were nearest ran away. From Harald Saga, chapter 92. Um, yeah, so it seems that these guys have possibly gone berserk. But the word berserk and berserker is not used to describe them. The only problem with this argument is that it's complete bullshit. Thorolf was the grandson of Kveldolf, who appears earlier in the saga, and in one battle is also described as going into a frenzy. Quote, Kveldolf had a gigantic double-bladed axe in his hand. Once he was on board, he told his men to go along the gunwale and cut the awnings from the pegs, while he stormed back off to the afterguard, where he is said to have become frenzied like a wild animal. Unquote. After Kveldolf and his men go berserk and kill everyone, the saga informs us, quote, It was said that people who could take on the character of animals, or went berserk, became so strong in this state that no one was a match for them, but also that just after it wore off they were left weaker than usual. Kveldolf was the same, so that when his frenzy wore off, he felt exhausted by the effort he had made, and was rendered completely powerless and had to lie down and rest, unquote. So Lindy Beige cherry-picked a case of a guy going into a frenzy to demonstrate that Berserk wasn't used to describe frenzied fighters, while completely ignoring another example from the same saga in which the word Berserk was used to describe a guy going into a frenzy. It's just ridiculous. What are this guy's sources, anyway? He went to school with Roderick Dale, whose PhD thesis was Berserker, a re-examination of the phenomenon in literature and life and consulted him when making the video. But the consultation must have taken place over a pint or ten, and it's pretty obvious that Lindy didn't read the thesis itself. For example, he freaks out over the idea of Celtic berserkers. Deliberately, they, they choose inept members of the public who knew nothing about the ancient world, um, and uh, get them to command armies on computer simula simulations. And on one of these, I saw 
an army that had massive units of Celtic berserkers armed with war picks. Yeah. Um, no, no, and no. Uh, no, the word berserker doesn't go with anything Celtic. As a matter of fact, Celtic berserkers do appear in the literature, as is mentioned in Roderick Dale's thesis on page 111. Uh, we don't have any evidence that there were Celtic berserkers in the sense of the Viking berserkers. No! So why does this video have over a million views? I guess it's the funny noises and the fact that it allows lazy people who don't read books to LARP as sophisticated intellectuals because they watched a 12 minute YouTube video. Der berserkers went berserk. What an uncouth notion, you uncultured peasant. Berserkers going berserk? How absurd. Scaligram's video is much better because he actually read the PhD thesis on which Lindy based his video. He gives a good breakdown of what the thesis actually says. His conclusion? Uh, again, keep in mind that the, the sources are difficult, incomplete, open to interpretation, and we don't really know that much. In short, we know quite little, actually. So what does the thesis itself say? It does argue for the possibility that berserkers did not go berserk, but without any of the false claims that Lindy Beige makes. And Dale doesn't simply claim that berserker means champion, but that the notion of berserker as champion likely existed alongside the older notion of berserker as Odin's man. But let's keep this whole thing in perspective. This is one guy's PhD thesis, not the academic consensus. He is, in fact, arguing against the consensus, according to which berserkers did go berserk. The only reason that Lindy is promoting Dale's ideas is that he went to school with him. Because everything is so uncertain, there are all sorts of bizarre theories about berserkers. For example, one guy claims that the remnants of the Roman gladiators went on to become berserkers. Imagine what the Lindy Beige Simpleton Squad would be posting on berserker vids if Lindy had gone to school with that guy. Furthermore, the paper's only real impact was on YouTube comment sections. It has two citations in six years. For example, here is an article by a professional historian specializing in Nordic Viking and medieval culture, written a couple years after Dale's thesis. He describes berserkers as going berserk and makes no mention of Dale's theory. Quote, but behind the myth and the shroud of history, the sources reveal the existence of men thriving on the border between life and death, fueled by war and distinguished by their ecstatic battle fury. The description of berserkers and wolfskins in the sources is on the boundary between fantasy and reality, and it is difficult for us today to imagine that such people can have ever existed possessed of incontrollable destructive power. But they did. Unquote. Professional historians have not bought into the idea that berserkers didn't go berserk. But its lack of impact doesn't mean that it's wrong. Could Dale's argument be correct? I think it's unlikely. Scaligram already explained the paper's arguments quite well. According to the paper, berserksgunger, usually translated as berserker rage, could have meant the berserker's process of psyching himself up before battle and intimidating his enemies by howling like a wolf and biting his shield. And Dale compares it to the Hakka war dance. He argues that the modern meaning of the word berserk has biased the interpretation of the phenomenon by scholars. But if berserkskonger was just a ritual to psych themselves up for battle, why is it described as leaving them exhausted for days afterwards? And berserkers weren't only described as biting their shields and howling, but also as foaming at the mouth. Foaming at the mouth sounds a lot less like a ritual, and a lot more like actual battle fury. Dale dismisses this as literary exaggeration, but Celtic berserkers were also described as foaming. So did two distinct literary traditions decide to exaggerate in the same way? And even Dale has to admit that in some cases, berserkers were described as going berserk in the modern sense of the word berserk. So even the author of the thesis admits that berserkers were described as howling, biting their shields, foaming at the mouth, and going berserk in the modern sense of the word. And the sources say that going berserk left berserkers exhausted for days afterwards. The simplest explanation for these behaviors is that berserkers went berserk, which is why this was and still is, the academic consensus. So I don't buy into his theory. 
Maybe you do. If so, go ahead and argue in its favor. But don't act like it is established fact and that anyone who disagrees is a winker. If you do that, then you're the winker.